The Shibuya Incident. My second favorite story arc of all time. Only being beat in my eyes by Hunter x Hunter's Chimera Ant arc. This arc was being built up from very early on in the series of Jujutsu Kaisen. And to me, it delivered in so many ways. But today, we're not here to discuss the entire arc of Shibuya, but instead, what happened to one of the sorcerers who was on the way to being promoted to a grade 1 sorcerer, and who is currently my favorite character in the series, Maki Zenin. Lots of carnage and destruction take place in Shibuya, and the characters that we have come to love get either horribly injured or end up dead. So what about Maki? Is she okay? Did she make it out of Shibuya alive? That's the question we're gonna be answering today. But first, I wanna talk about the role Maki played in Shibuya. If you've seen all of Jujutsu Kaisen Season 2, then you should already be aware. And this will be a fun recap. But if you haven't, major spoilers ahead for Shibuya, aka Season 2 of Jujutsu Kaisen, and spoilers for content past Shibuya. If you don't care, or you're just really curious anyway, then join me, my fellow Vagabonds, as we discuss what happened to Maki in Shibuya. Bang. October 31st, 2018. Halloween night in Tokyo, Shibuya. A night that any who survived it, and us the audience who witnessed it, will never Forget. We focus on Maki Zenin, who is with Naobito Zenin and Nobara Kukisaki at Shibuya Mark City Restaurant Avenue entrance. They meet up with Akari Nita, who then informs them about the current situation and that they'll be on standby for now. Sometime later, when the citizens in Shibuya are attacked by mutated humans, Maki, Nobara, and Naobito head into the curtain to help. While they're dealing with the mutated humans, Maki is informed that something happened to Ijichi, who is an assistant manager on this mission. Maki senses something's off and tells Nobara to take Nita to Ichichi's location since they can't use their cell phones because of the veil. And this is why the assistant managers are critical to this operation. Maki says that she'll deal with the mutated humans by herself because now now Bito is currently drunk. I fucking, I, bro, I hate this fucking dude. Maki also thinks to herself that if worse comes to worse and Nita and Nobara are out of the veil, they can run to safety, showing how much she cares for those two. Later on, Maki and now Bito meet up with Great One Sorcerer Kento Nanami, and they all head to Shibuya Station. While on the way there, Maki says that Naobito's drunk ass should just head home if he's not gonna be of any help, and Naobito says that's what she should do. Nanami actually agrees with Naobito because he's concerned for her safety, but Maki says that she'll be more useful than some fucking drunk. And this is when they encounter one of the disaster curses, Dagon. Naobito takes on Dagon, using his projection sorcery, completely blitzing Dagon for a while, showing why he's the second fastest Jujutsu sorcerer, only second to Satoru Gojo. Dagon releases a torrent of water. Maki manages to get above it. Nanami attacks Dagon and Maki follows up. Dagon blocks Maki's attack, then Naobito hits him with projection sorcery. Maki thinks to herself that if Naobito didn't use his sorcery back then, she would have died. She's humiliated by this, being saved by the one who put her and her sister through so much pain and suffering. The three sorcerers attack all at once and force Dagon to retreat. Dagon decides to unleash his domain expansion, Horizon of the Captivating Skanda. Maki and Nanami are instantly hit by the domain's sure hit technique. Now Bito uses a secret technique that was passed down through the big three clans of Jujutsu. Falling Blossom Emotion. This technique is very similar to Simple Domain, which protects the user from a domain expansion sure hit technique by countering with their own cursed energy. Dagon uses his Death Swarm attack and has 70% of it attack Naobito and 30% attack Nanami. Even with Maki's Heavenly Restriction, which grants her superhuman levels of physical prowess, Maki is still unfortunately the weakest link in this battle. After Naobito and Nanami are dealt with, Dagon attacks Maki while calling her weak. And then Maki gets back up and says one of the best lines in the series. If you're gonna call me weak, then kill me in a single blow. Octo bitch. And this is why we love Maki. Suddenly, our goat, Megumi Fushiguro, breaks into the domain and gives Maki the playful cloud curse tool. Just what she needed in this fight. Maki then uses the tool to fight Dagon and manage to wound him. Nanami, now heavily wounded, makes it over to Megumi and protects him. Both Maki and now Bito, now missing an arm, continues to fight Dagon. Megumi says that he can open a small hole in the domain 
so they can escape. Higumi makes a hole, and Nanami tells Maki and now Bito to assemble so they can escape. This is their best bet, and probably the only chance they'll get to escape and win this battle. However, suddenly, without any warning, the one who inherited the curse of the Zenin clan from birth, and the one who could not completely cast off that curse, they all stood in witness to the one who left it all behind, now manifested in raw flesh and taking action. Toji Fushiguro. In an instant, Toji grabs hold of Playful Cloud and yanks it from Maki with ease. Maki sensed zero cursed energy from this man, wondering how she, of all people, lost a contest of physical strength, having no idea about the power that Toji possessed. Ogami used her seance technique to transform her grandson into Toji to gain his abilities. The grandson's personality was overwritten by Toji. Toji explains that copying their body was a mistake, because his body is special, and the grandson's soul lost to Toji's body, thanks to his complete heavenly restriction. Because Ogami's seance technique continues after her death, and her grandson's lack of cursed energy, Toji remains active, his sole reason to exist now being to mindlessly fight until his body is destroyed, hunting down the strongest opponent closest to him to kill. He became a puppet of carnage. Toji completely obliterates Dagon, the cursed spirit having zero chance against the sorcerer killer. It's an absolute spectacle to witness. As Maki watches Toji fight against Dagon, Maki wonders aloud who Toji is, with Naobito responding that Toji is just a ghost. Toji sharpens Playful Cloud and brutally stabs Dagon over and over, finally exercising him. The domain is finally gone. However, Toji is still a puppet of carnage, seeking out the strongest opponent closest to kill. He perception blitzes everyone, throwing Megumi outside. Megumi now having to face against his father, who he's unaware this man is. Worried about Megumi, the other sorcerers don't notice the disaster curse Jogo arrive, who mourns Dagon's death. Nanami says that this curse spirit is on a whole nother level than the one they just faced. Jogo says leave the rest to him. He then turns and I'll accept it, Mahito. <gasps> I am you. For the remainder of the Shibuya incident, we're unaware of Maki's status. Did she survive? Is she okay? Where is she? And to answer that question- OH THANK GOD! OH GOD! OH SHE SURVIVED! Oh. oh, but she definitely didn't get out unscathed. We saw Jogo torch Maki from the chest up. She has burn scars on her face, has bandages over her right eye, and her hair is cut. She most likely had no choice but to cut it because it got torched. Yuki Sukumo says she survived thanks to her heavenly restriction, but even reverse curse technique ended up leaving scars on her body. But she's alive. And that's the most important thing. And she has a cloak on. And bro, let me just say, tell me how she got burnt up and looks even more badass than she did before. Hey, this is why she might go. Only someone like Maki, bruh. And luckily for us Maki fans, we'll get to see her being a badass in a mini arc focused on her called Perfect Preparation. If you know, you know. But if you don't know, why not join the journey and find out? Hope y'all enjoyed that video. Uh, how y'all doing? <laughs> Hope y'all like what you saw. I have many more videos like this planned. And yeah, I think they're gonna be a lot of fun to make. Like I said, past Shibuya, Maki has her own mini arc focused on her and her family called Perfect Preparation. And if you want me to make a video on that, then let me know and I'll get that out faster than I already am because I'm gonna I'm gonna make it. I, I wanna make the video, so I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna try to get this out this week. I'm recording this on Tuesday. So but Grand Blue Fantasy Relink and Versus Rising and Persona 3 came out, so I'm I'm a try y'all. <laughs> I love you guys and be safe on your journey, my fellow vagabonds.